recently got a report given to CWS by the social worker at the hospital. Um, I was at high risk social situation and uh, I spoke. an attorney from my office, Ms. Jennifer Ani. Jennifer is a expert in CPS cases, and she uh, practices in cases all over the state of California. Oh, before I forget, I want to thank uh, one of our sponsors for today. Our show is brought in part by ShrineStore.com. If you want to dress like a rock star, visit ShrineStore.com. Jennifer, let's take a call right now. Let's talk to Tashida from California. Tashida, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? I have a story and a question. Go for it. Okay. So, I am Tashida. Um, I'm from, I live in California, in San Diego. And, um, I have had two children taken by PWS, um, infant children, uh, one from the hospital, um, basically. I was, um, went to the hospital for trial labor and during my complications, I had a really awful surgery and the hospital um, alerted me that I had syphilis, um, and that I would need antibiotic treatment as well as my infant child. And they would have to remove her from me and she had to be the NICU for 10 days of antibiotic treatment. Um, during my surgery, my partner was not allowed to be in the operating room and all of our rights were, I'd say unrecognized um, or they didn't matter. And we subsequently got a report given to CWS by the social worker at the hospital. Um, I was at high risk social situation and uh, I smoked marijuana, um, which is part of my religious belief. So, you know, rights and things. So um, our child, was removed from us after they uh, released her, not to me, um, but to my partner, because they said that CWS had come up with a story that I was on drugs and I have syphilis and I was a danger to my child and that her father was, you know, a better suit for her care. So I just, um, went along with it because I figured uh, I'd never had any problem with the system before. I have three older children, uh, 15, uh, 9, and 7. Um, they are, live with their father, were divorced um, from joint custody. But uh, so my daughter being taken, I figured they'd give her to family, my partner, my mother, my sister. Um, and we were planning to move to, we were about to move to Northern California after I had the baby, we're leaving. Um, but CWS stepped in and they did end up removing my daughter after we signed two safety plans and I went to drug tests and um, they didn't put me on the list of drug tests and then they said I was dirty because I didn't show up and just all these things and I had already called the ombudsman and Days later, my daughter was removed, and she was taken to a foster family where she remains still. Um, the woman, the caretaker, said that she wanted to adopt her the first, second, third hearing we had. And that has just been 
we've been fighting, we've been visiting, we've been doing whatever they say. But we've also been homeless and we've been struggling. And because our family did move to Northern California, we were just been left behind um, fighting for our daughter because we can't leave the county because they'll say we abandoned her. And in the meantime, I get pregnant again. <laughs> and I had to be in April of 2021. Um, the CWS came, they did their checks. We met with them and saw the three of you was fine. They sent the police, they did a well check. Um, the baby was fine, but they still uh, took it. I, they still wanted to remove my daughter. They said they came with a warrant. We barricaded ourselves in our room because we stayed at a transitional housing um, and we didn't give our baby up. We said, no, okay, police have been here. We're not keeping our child up. You already have one. So why are you here? We've done all your checks. We're fine. But they insisted and there's police officers here, like 20, 30 cops here trying to take my kid and we weren't, we're standing up for our rights. We have civil rights, we have human rights, and we have constitutional rights, and they are violating all of them. So we we don't. We don't give a child up. And days go by, we have food delivered, because we're COVID anyway, so we don't leave our space. And so we're sticking it out. We had family come from Northern California to visit to the baby. Um, while there are cops outside the door, you know, just it was crazy. So it died down for a few days and we, the hotel, the transitional housing hotel that we stay at, it's um, the extended stay of America. One of the front desk people gave that guy our room number so he could come harass us. And they subsequently, um, the hotel got with police officers and the CWS person and they ambushed us at the front desk and put me in handcuffs um, and took my baby Two minutes. Away. This man, I, I don't know who he is. Wait, hold it, Tishita. Um, Tishita, hold on a second, because we're running out of time. What was the question you wanted to ask us today? Well, I've had this time with um, attorneys. Like, the attorney they gave me, I let her go. I She wasn't doing anything, and they are going for adoption. And then I... They gave her back to me when at another junction in the case. Mm -hmm. They but gave the same lawyer back to me. Shida, what is the question? And Go ahead and ask me the question. How a person that doesn't have money um, get help for these dependency cases? Because not everybody can lawyer in them. And right. I need help. Right. Like, you should be able to ask for another attorney to be appointed to you if you feel that your attorney I did. I did, and he gave me the same attorney. But you can make a motion um, under a case. Uh, Jennifer, what's the name of that case where you can ask for a new court-appointed attorney? Um, is it Jackson W? And there's also a Marsden hearing that could be held. A Marsden hearing, right? So I did a Marsden for her uh, first time to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. And then I asked for another lawyer in another junction and the judge gave me the same lawyer. Well, I think you, if you made a Marston hearing to get rid of attorney number one and it worked, yeah. I don't believe the judge yeah. can reappoint attorney number one to you later on in the case. And if the judge does, no. what, you should, what you should consider is filing an appeal or a writ. You know, do me a favor to shoot it because I, we are having to take a break. Call me at my office next week and I'll talk to you more about it. 888 6582. That's 888 6582. And Tashida, I want to thank you for calling in and thank you for listening. We're going to take a break right now and we'll, we'll be right back after these messages. 